first couple of years, we had set expectations with our with our wives that it's mm. going to be very, very tough for the first two years. You're not at home much, so you're mm. leaving at 6 a.m. sometimes, many times, and you're coming at midnight. Mm. So you're basically not there when they're awake. Um, even when you're there, you're, you're not listening to them. It was also happening in the early days. We had no customer service, and mm. we were providing a 24-7 you know, transportation service. So we ha kept phones with us when we were sleeping. So mm -hmm. if someone calls at 3 a.m., it wakes up my wife and it wakes up Magnus's mm -hmm. wife as well. I think somewhere in the second or third year, I think the wives forced a discussion on us that when is this going to get better? There was no sight of things getting better. In fact, if anything, I felt I was busier two years into it than I was in the <laughs> beginning because there was just a lot more to manage. So at that point, we, uh, we wrote down what we called... Uh, a family contract. Um, four of us sat down and we basically wrote down what we call the boundary conditions, the things that we commit to our wives that we will do on a weekly, monthly basis. So for me, I remember it included uh, at least being home on Fridays. There was probably one or two days that I was supposed to be home at a time when I could actually meet her before she goes to bed. The contract was sort of written, we signed it, and the idea was that Magnus and I will hold each other accountable uh, to what we were supposed to do uh, and then our families could raise the flag as well and said you guys are not abiding to the contract that you signed with us.